Hey guys, uh, this is DFS Chan coming to you to talk about um, <laughs> uh, League of Legends games um, that are going to happen in the next several days. As mentioned before, um, we're approaching the playoffs time and the LCK, they've already, they've already started the playoffs uh, starting last night. Um, I believe Damon Kia uh, have, has beat uh, Fred and Breon last night. And then tonight they, they have another LCK game tonight. Um, but yeah, so um, in the LPL though, we have two more regular season games, uh, both involving OMG. Um, OMG's games have gotten postponed, as you can tell. They're playing three games in three days. Uh, so they lost to FPX this morning, but they're playing against LNG tonight and then RNG the next day. So it's a tough stretch of uh, three games that they're gonna have to play against. And technically they're still alive uh, for playoff purposes, um, even though the, the, game, the loss against FPX was crucial because FPX and OMG are actually right next to each other in the standing. So OM OMG would have to win all these two games, both of these games rather, um, to be able to make it to the playoffs or maybe uh, force a tiebreaker game against FPX. So yeah, so anyway, um, so we, I can dive into the LPL matchups, regular season matches, but as you can tell on DK, on DraftKings, that they um, have not made any multiple game slates. I only I only see showdowns uh, for these games, which I understand. I mean, they're, they're best of three series rather than the playoff games will be NR uh, in the LCK, as you saw, it's a best of five series. So, you know, for that reason, I understand why they separated these, but they can also make it a two, two, day, two day slate, like one day today, one game from today, and then one game from tomorrow. Um, which I, which they have done, and I feel like they that's what they're gonna do moving forward, especially with the LEC games coming up in Europe. Their playoff games start on Friday, um, so that's gonna be happening in the next couple of days, several days over the throughout the weekend. So I assume, I presume rather that DraftKings will make a multiple day slate um, for um, classic type of League of Legends DFS slates. So I'm hoping that's the case. Uh, rather than these showdowns, uh, which are hard to predict, um, because really, I mean, showdown, it just deals with one game and anything can happen in, an, in, in one game scenario. So it's hard to predict in, the, in that um, outcome D for DFS purposes, rather. So in, in this video, I'll talk about the remaining LPL regular season matchups for those of you who are interested in betting or playing showdown slates. And then mainly the video will focus on the LEC playoff matchups um, because I have a feeling that DraftKings will create a multiple day, multiple day classic slate uh, for the LEC playoff matchups. So I'm hoping that's the case, but you know, we'll see what happens. And then the next uh, preview for the next videos that I will provide are on the last week of LCS in North America. So after that, uh, this, after this weekend, the LCS will go into the playoffs as well. And then I'll make another video for the LPL LCK playoffs that starts, uh, LPL playoffs starts on March 26th, which is this weekend. So I actually presume that since they're all going to be best of five series for the LPL and LCK starting this Saturday, I, I think uh, DraftKings could make multiple game slates um, in that regard. So I'll have a video uh, previewing that as well. So yeah, let's dive into the LPL matchups real quick. Like I said, OMG is in uh, both of these. OMG did not look that great today against FPX, just to uh, give you a heads up. Um, they are a good team fighting team, um, but they that also can mean they, they are so volatile. They win games through their team fights mainly. Um, the objective security uh, is not the, their you know, utmost um, you know, what they specialize in rather. So let's look at um, today's lineups here. Um, Ale, Tarzan, Doin B, Light, and Iwandi. Yeah, the regular starters, uh, same for both teams. OMG started these guys uh, earlier today as well. So I do wanna look at the standings if, uh, if L uh, LNG has any motivation or, you know, reason to try very hard. So I do wanna see that real quick, um, LPL. Oh, LPL 2022, that's better. 
So LNG is in the top four, I believe. No, top six, they've fallen down a little bit. Okay. So I do believe for better seeding, LNG will want to win this. Um, like Weibo Gaming is in the fifth place. Um, so yeah, that's, that's very interesting, I think. Um, I'm not sure if my uh, computer is frozen. So excuse me, sorry. So anyway, I'll just dive in. So LNG, uh, I think, will need to win this game uh, for better seeding. And but obviously, OMG has a better, bigger motivation in securing a win here to keep their playoff chances alive. Um, I do believe that just given the lack of LNG's recent performance, OMG is definitely in play. As you see, the the odds are uh, LNG is favored at minus two seventy eight, and OMG is at plus two, 200, I would actually take a chance on OMG um, on, for many reasons. I think LNG has been struggling, like I said, so OMG definitely has a shot. And second reason is that playing back-to-back -back matches can, def can definitely help a team like OMG where they focus mostly on team fights. So I think like today's uh, games against FPX, OMG definitely could have uh, pulled off that series in my opinion, um, especially in game three. I think OMG kind of ran out of gas, but I think having played a series like that with good team fighting in certain spots, I really do think that OMG will get better uh, the next day if they are playing the next day, which in case, you know, in this case they are. Um, I do think they can catch LNG off guard in my opinion. I, I like OMG. I like to take a shot at OMG at plus 200 if you are straight up better. So that's, that's where I'm at um, for showdown. You know, I think, um, for GPP, um, that would definitely take a spot, you know, shot at OMG. I mean, you just have to pick four, four players for showdown slates. I've played a few times here and there. I just haven't had a good any good luck with it. Um, but if I were to focus on certain players for showdown, which obviously are the most critical thing, in my opinion, for showdown slates, um, the obvious choices would be B and Light, and especially Light. B has been struggling a bit, you know, in bad form. So you could some, go something like light Tarzan or light Ale from LNG if you really wanted to. Um, skipping Doin B because I think most people will be on Doin B uh, for leverage purposes. I think there is a I see a path where Tarzan and or Ale can outscore Doin B as well. For OMG, it's all about Abel here. I think um, Abel has been just lights out for OMG when they're winning the game. Um, for DFS purposes, I mean, I, I love it, Abel, and then so I would match up Abel with obviously the cream is a good good pick. <laughs> but then Aki Aki has not been performing that well. I mean, his kill participation is pretty low compared to other junglers in the LPL. So I, I, I'd probably compare I probably pair Abel and Cream or Abel and Shanji. But then I think the ultimate leverage is in the mid laner here. If you are not playing able, I think you would go cream and somebody else uh, with that and for OMG uh, heavier stack. So anyway, so that's all I got for you guys today for the for this matchup. And then the next matchup, like I said, it's OMG against they're playing against, they're playing again, but against RNG. I fully expect RNG to win. Um, I do want to try this one more time. See where RNG is at. I check. I can just see this. RNG is in the second place, and Victory Five won today. Uh, won their game today, so there is no chance for RNG to overtake that. Um, but I do think they need to separate themselves from Top Esports, JD Gaming, and Asuna Gaming. Um, so Awable Gaming, rather, I guess. Um, so I think RNG is such so more such much. Sorry, RNG is much more methodical, in my opinion. Um, so I do like RNG here to win this matchup. Uh, their last game of the series, they want to win this game to better focus going into the playoffs. Um, I do think it's a great spot for RNG to kind of hone in on their skills, um, especially the team fighting aspects of it because of, you know, their opponent and OMG who likes to fight. So I do like RNG to win this here. Um, I think OMG, if they get desperate, I mean, if they, if they win the game tonight against LNG, now it's a must win game um, for OMG, right? So I think the desperation um, can kick in, um, can cause a lot of team fights for them to win. 
But at the end of the day, I think RNG is going to be too much for um, for OMG. I mean, uh, yeah, too much, too much uh, for OMG. So I like I like RNG to uh, to win this here. So and then yeah, and then those starters for RNG and OMG, which I expect it to be the same from the regular starters. I don't I don't think it will change. So I think the starter uh, confirmation will be the same. All right, let's dive into the more interesting matchups uh, for LEC rather. Um, it's gonna be three matchups this weekend, starting on Friday. Rogue versus Misfits Gaming, and then Fnatic versus G2, and then Excel versus Vitality. So that, I, I think, I, yeah, I mean, I think these are all really good six teams um, in the playoffs. Let's look at the bracket real quick. Um, I do wanna show you how they are seeded. Um, I think that is a very important thing to look at because of the potential matchups down the road. And some people, some teams, you know, obviously overlook their current opponent, you know, looking ahead and all that. So that could happen. But here, as you can see, Rogue versus Misfits, um, they're playing on Friday. And then Fnatic versus G2 are playing on Saturday. And then the losers bracket between XL Gaming and Vitality are playing on Sunday. So I have a feeling that DraftKings will maybe make these two games a two-game slate or the last two games a two-game slate, like Fnatic G2 and XL Vitality. But either way, I think I've seen where they do both. Like they create this slate, two-game slate, and then the two-game slate uh, using the Fnatic and G2 game as a stacking game. So I have seen both, both times, both ways. Um, so we'll see what DraftKings does. Um, but in my opinion, Rogue is a better team. But Misfits has a has a dark horse uh, in mid laner, but Theo, uh, he well he made it to the LEC All First Team, so I thought that was very interesting, and I think well, he fully deserved it. I think he's been the mid, best mid laner in my opinion, um, in the LEC. I mean, especially like throughout. If you look at the entire split, yeah, I mean, I think Theo has been the best team, best best mid laner, and that's the reason why Misfits is in the spot right here. I do want to see <clears throat> where they each finished. So here, as you can tell, Misfits finished third, Fnatic finished second. So Rogue and, uh, Rogue and Misfits are playing. So first and third, and then Fnatic and G2, second and fourth. And then Excel and Vitality are in the loser's bracket, so they're five and six, right? So, so that's going to be an interesting matchup. Um, if I were to compare rosters, I think, which I'll do right here, I do want to see like, you know, like uh, once like, I do want to see like um, Rogue and Misfits. I think that's going to be an interesting matchup. Um, Rogue obviously has a really good mid laner as well um, in Larson. So here I'll show you the roster here. Um, I fully expect this five to start. I don't think Blue Knight's going to sub in or whatever. Um, I think Odo Omne has been really good. Marang has been all right in my opinion. I think he was a good addition to the team to kind of give give Rogue a different dynamics uh, to play with. Um, because as you as you guys probably know, if you guys have been playing League of Legends the past couple of years, Rogue has been a very slow team and methodical team uh, where they their CKPM was really low, um, so they were a very slow team. So they didn't really have that kind of like a playmaker or like, you know, something, some jungler that, that was, that would cause, um, or, or, or jungler that would mesh better with the players that they have, especially Larson. I know Inspired used to be pretty good for uh, Rogue and he is doing well in the LCS, but um, Ma Rang, I, I think he just brings a different dynamics and different layer of, of um, um, math pressure and team fighting skills and all that as well. But so far looking at the metrics though, throughout the split, uh, Marang's um, numbers aren't that very, that numbers aren't very good in my opinion. I don't think he deserved to make it to the L LEC first team, um, but I understand why, because they finished, Rogue finished with the best record and jungling is probably one of the most important positions for such success. Um, but Larson, in my opinion, has been the best player for that team. And then I know Odo Omne has been really good too. But yeah, at the end of the day, I think they match up very well against Fateo um, because, because of Larson, who can neutralize um, Fateo. 
So that's going to be the marquee matchup of this game, in my opinion. Um, but at the end of the day, I think uh, I have more confidence in Odo Omni over Hirit. Hirit was good last year, but he hasn't been very good this year. And Schlatan, I mean, coming from EU Masters, I think he's been really good, solid. But I'm not that scared of Schlatan to beat Malrang. I think they're both mediocre junglers. Um, and then, like I said, in the bottom uh, mid lane, it's a wash. The bottom lane, though, Neon and Mursa have been have been pretty good. Um, but I prefer Comp and Trimby um, over them. So at the end of the day, I think Rogue will pull this off, especially in a best of five series. I think it will come down to Larson's experience and um, Odo Omne's experience. So I, I do like Rogue uh, to advance here. Um, in this matchup. So I say Rogue wins three to one. I do think Mateo has a game in him where he can just carry a snowball um, or make a crazy play. Um, but I think at the end of the day, Rogue wins uh, this matchup, in my opinion. And then look at let's look at the next matchup, Fnatic versus G2. Fnatic um, versus G2, the classic um, LEC matchup. Um, but this year, Fnatic had tremendous expectations after building uh, you know, a super roster, just like Vitality. Um, Fnatic was finished uh, or projected to finish second or first in, um, in most um, expert preseason power rankings, whereas G2 did not. Um, G2 was projected to maybe finish in somewhere in the middle of the rankings, which they actually played better than, fair, uh, finished better than I expected. So uh, I do think G2's uh, engine goes with, Caps and Yankos. Um, I do think Broken Blade in the top lane has played really well. So let's look at their rosters and I'll kind of make a prediction as well. Um, so Fnatic is the favorite at minus 250 and the G2 is an underdog at plus 175. So let's look at the favorite and Fnatic and their roster. So in the top lane, they have Wonder, who's been really good, who used to play for G2. So it'd be like a revenge narrative for him. And then Resort has been pretty good. Um, I think he's been better than, let's say, like Schlatan and like Malrang, like I mentioned in the other matchup. Um, so I think Resort has been solid. Humanoid, actually, I think he finished um, in the top three mid laners um, in the LEC throughout the split. So they're really solid. Even in the bottom lane, Upset and Hilly Sang have been really good. Hilly Sang has been lights out, at least for the most part of the LEC. So Fnatic has a really solid team. And G2 have been up, has been up and down. But Broken Blade has been really, really good in the top lane. I'd say he's like the top two uh, top laners this, this split. And then Yankos and Cavs, obviously both very experienced. But Yankos... Um, has been has found that a second wind in my opinion in jungling he's been pretty good uh, and then caps has been up and down but caps is caps I think he will show up in the playoffs now Flak and Targamas that's where the weakness is in my opinion I think they're going to struggle against upset and hilly saying I, I fully expect uh, Fnatic to take advantage of that bottom lane put, to put a lot of resources in upset and hilly saying so obviously that's going to be really good for DFS purposes in my opinion where upset gets a lot of kills and assists and all that. Um, and the humanoid, I think, is a better mid laner than Caps. Maybe it wasn't the case two years ago, but now it is. I think Caps has kind of, you know, up and down, has been up and down, like I said. So I like, I like humanoid's chances there. Now, I think in the jungle, it could be a wash, but Resort has been very solid. But even, but in the top lane, I actually prefer Broken Blade over. Uh, fanatics wonder so I'll, I, I have an advantage in G, uh, G for G2 and that uh, in that lane but ultimately adding all that up um, and after watching those games I prefer fanatic to win I think fanatic will struggle a little bit because of the experience in Yankos and Caps um, I do think though it's not like these are rookies um, for humanoid and upset and upset play for mad line you know so like these guys are experienced and wonder will know better I mean he used to play for G2 um, to not give broken blade a very you know you know like snowball uh, opportunity for broken blade so I think wonder will play smart 
I do think with all that experience as well for Fnatic, I do think um, Fnatic will pull this off. I actually have Fnatic wins three to zero. I just do not see Caps or Flak carry a game. I do think G2 can definitely play as a team better than let's say like Misfits. But at the end of the day, I think Fnatic is too much. Um, like I said, their talent on that roster is too much in my opinion. So I, I like Fnatic to win there as well. Last matchup, and this is the matchup between, I guess the two, you know, they're in the losers bracket, um, but for what it's worth, I mean, they're both good teams. Um, Excel has <clears throat> made a strong push at the end of the split to make it to make it this far. And Vitality, obviously, they formed the super team this past off season um, to have a chance at the playoffs here. And they are actually they were projected to finish like first, second, or third, like in the top three. But they had they had a very disappointing early part of the split but they've actually come a long, long way throughout the split. Um, I think just having built this super roster it takes, you know, some time to gel, um, just like in the NBA, like, you know, when, when, you know, teams build super teams, you know, in the off season, it takes, so it takes some time to figure it out, you know, who has the ball and, you know, that who dominates the ball. So they'll, they just have learned to figure each other out and learn how to play with each other. Um, but yeah. But I just don't know because I just feel like the vitality has been so volatile up and down, whereas Excel has been their ceiling is really low Excel for me, but they're so much more consistent than vitality. And in a best of five series like that, it, that that speaks volumes. I think I think a lot of people will just look at the roster and look at the names of the players and be like, ah, vitality's got this. But this is kind of like my take. Like, I think Excel has been a better team than Vitality has been. Um, you know, in other words, like, I feel like Excel has um, these players that have played with each other much longer, in my opinion. Um, I mean, not all of them, but like some of them. So, like, I just feel like Excel, especially the addition of Mickey in the support position, I think it has made a difference along the way. I, people expected Mickey to make an immediate difference, like immediate upgrade, um, but I just didn't think that would happen. But I actually was impressed with Mickey making a difference throughout the split, and I feel like he is one of the big reasons why they made the playoffs. So, yeah, I, I think this is more of a 50-50 call, in my opinion, whereas some other people think may think Vitality will just cruise along. Um, but I actually have XL winning here. Um, which may shock some people. Upset vitality. I'm gonna say three to two. I think it's gonna be a long drawn out series. Um, I, just to go over the rosters. I mean, I know Marcoon, Finn. I mean, I know these guys are not <laughs> better individually than the players on Vitality. I get that, but just watching the games over the the the, the past couple months. Excel has shown me that they've improved so much as a team. So especially with Mickey now having a lot of games under his belt, I do like Nuke Duck um, to play. Uh, he's been playing better. And I think he will go do well against Perks, who's been struggling here and there. Uh, he hasn't been the same since he left Cloud9, or I guess G2, <laughs> rather. So, so I'm not too hugely worried about that. And I, I don't think I'm not that concerned about self-made the way that I am with like, let's say, you know, uh, let's say I am for other junglers, like for Mad Lions and such. So, but yeah, so I, I really do think Excel can pull this off. Um, but I, if I were to focus um, like a lot of resources for Excel, I think it will be in the bottom, bottom duo here, Patrick and Mickey. I think Patrick has shown up, um, especially if you watch the last couple weeks of the split. Um, Patrick's kill participation has been really was really high, um, and there's a reason for that. They figure out a, I guess, like a recipe uh, for success in their wins. So as you can tell here, I'll kind of go over the match history just to prove my point. Um, here, as you can tell, I mean, I know they lost 
like they basically lost a game and then won one game, like this whole split. But they've won more games here and like in the Feb in February. I know they lost to Fnatic, but like I said, I think Fnatic is the best team in my opinion, even over Rogue. Um, but then they lost to G2 here. They lost to Rogue, but those are like top three teams in my opinion. But they beat against like other inconsistent inconsistent teams like Mad Lions and inferior teams like SK Gaming and Astralis. Now they're head to head between Excel and Vitality here, as you can see. I mean, they beat Vitality here, and then guess what? They beat them again here in January. So um, I do think, um, given those head-to-head -head records, but also given the recent form that they've been beating these inferior teams or more inconsistent teams, I like Excel's chances to to beat Vitality. So that will probably be my upset of the LEC playoffs. Um, but I think Rogue and Fnatic will cruise along in their respective matchups. Anyway, so that's all I got for you guys today. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I'll post the starters, but I'm not, uh, I'm not anticipating any big changes from these rosters. Actually, I think they're all going to be the same regular starters from the regular season uh, split. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, let me know. If you want to just talk league, I'm happy to do that. I love League of Legends, as you can tell. So if you uh, just want to shoot the shit, let me know. Um, but like I said, the next videos will be on the last week of LCS. I don't think I made that many, very many, uh, many LCS based videos, um, but I'll do that since it's the last week. Uh, but I've been watching the LCS, even though the quality of the league is not as good as let's say LEC, LPL or LCK. Um, I do still follow and watch them. So I'll have some nuggets for you guys in that next video. And then after that, I, like I said, I'll go over the best of five series that will start on Saturday for both LPL, LPL and LCK that will happen. And I'm hoping that DraftKings will create those classic slates uh, using those playoff games. Anyway, so yeah, if you guys like the video, please, please, please hit the like button. It means a lot. And then hit the subscribe button if you want to watch other videos, uh, videos about other sports uh, for true DFS. Uh, that would be great. Thanks so much. Have a good day. Bye.